Welcome to the Dork Table. And yeah, well, Vinny's going to be a little late, so I'm going to start this crap off t tonight, my night, your day, all by my little lonesome. And uh, let's see, what do we got going on? I guess the beginning of this one will say, this is the Dork Table. I'm still Flash somebody, and Vinny's late. So we'll go to, hey, everybody at the RLNM. Uh, damn, I hate doing this stuff alone when I'm expecting my partner in crime to show up. Uh, we got Barman on the top and Cowboy Tech. Hey, Cowboy. Grimner, poor Grimner, chained to this computer, having to endure all our wonderful and collective wisdom. <laughs> and others. Oh. Uh, Miss Kate, we got Fan the Phantom and Anti, hey Anti, Asmo, Beth Z, Chloe, Chalcedony Circle, hey honey, Chloe again, hey two Chloe's got Chloe doubles today, Colfax 101, and my personal favorite Apox, and Don C's here, Dakota, I'm here. We got Frumpy, Graham Z, Gromit. Who the hell is Gromit anyway? I never did catch that one. Hey, Don C's double dipping. So we got another Don. Java Doctor and Java Doctor 2. J's, Nines, J's. What a taco. Don't anybody go running out for tacos while me and Vinny are doing the show, though. Wait, wait, until, we're <laughs> wait until we're finished. Then we got Kozu, Layer 8, Meister Brow. Mm hmm. Pox box, poxified, pox phone, pone sauce, rain. The fluke is always underneath Rob Works. I am becoming very suspicious. Hey, bubbler, we got Rob Works, sock puppet, skittle, trust number one, and a new name at the very bottom called Zaleth. Hmm. Sounds like a sounds like a snack. Hey, gonna go get me a box of Zalith, and I ain't sharing it with anybody. So I guess Vinny wanted to do a 9-11 a tribute in honor of the people that helped massacre the civil rights right out of an entire country in about, well, I don't know, a day. <laughs> Didn't take them very long. And it was kind of surprising to see that phone book that they had uh, called, what did they call that, the Patriot Act. They had it all printed and ready to go in. I don't think the government's printed anything faster in its history than money when it come down to that. That Patriot Act and all its wonderful surprises that it has in store for you. You know, kind of like the Obamacare. You gotta vote on it to see what's inside. But this time, you don't have to vote on anything. They voted for you. Hmm. And my version of it, not only did they vote for you and make all your decisions, but they picked your enemy. They lied out their ass about every possible thing they could make up. And here we are, all these years later, celebrating 9-11 like it's some kind of fucking holiday. But, you know, well, maybe that's just my people that are doing that because they've made so fucking much money off it. I don't know. I got ya tweeted, minded, finned, and airload, whatever that means. Thanks, Grim. Yeah, uh, Vinny and when I do the show with Vinny or Mary, they do all that technical, you know, niceties about where we're put out and posted. And I just get on here with Vinny or Mary or Grim or whoever and just try to have a <laughs> a good giggle at a bad situation because. Hmm. Well, they say it's bragging, but I don't see all this conflict and fighting and strife in the world. I live in a a little tiny, um, what do you call it, like a retirement village in Denmark. <laughs> and the only exciting things that happen here, people sleep through them. So it eh, doesn't, really, doesn't really make any difference. And that joke went to shit, but hey, I'll try to work on it. Let's see. We're still stalling for the Vincenzo man. Maybe I should get something on here to read, but 
I do try to stray away from that and rely on my crafty notes. That would take about a week. No, they did it in Congress. You got to speed read it. And it's. I don't have a copy. Thank you. My wife was trying to help me out, but I'm going to go with why I'm thankful today. And I think I'm thankful today because it ain't 9-11 again <laughs> so far. <laughs> but it's early. Anything's possible. Yeah, we're waiting on Vincent to get back. Uh, what's a tough one? What do we got in the... Uh, I got... Oh, yeah, I read that already. Yeah, thanks, Vinny. He had to go shopping for uh, groceries and stuff in town. He lives a little bit uh, harder than I do as far as... Um, access to the financial world and all its glorious wonders let's see what do we have in the old notes to actually yak about tonight hmm i don't see anything that's all that hey i know what we get into these banter bots all the time on the rl and m if you want to fight about politics and voting and i don't know which side of the cake you want to eat and all that kind of crap, come over to the reallibertymedia.com. Get a nickname and make a fool out of yourself. It's free. Mm. Let's see. If Vincent don't show, his punishment will be to read the Patriot Act in its full extent on the air on RLM. Well, sir, I'm sorry, but Vinny would do that. <laughs> Just have the radio time. <laughs> You can't shut that boy up. Anyway, so we've been um, debating this. Rob Works gets into it sometimes about voting is a scam. And there's a lot of people that don't believe that. I think they're up to four. The, the silent majority on the voter side of Real Liberty Media, we calculated it earlier today. And out of the... Oh, I don't know, 40-odd names that you'll see on the screen. What of them aren't bots, aren't voters, <laughs> except for four. <laughs> hmm. So, I guess they're the silent majority. And they're going to rule us, whether we like it or not, for a long, long time. But, there's good news. And that good news is... You don't have to support this crap if you really don't want to. So, I'm kind of stuck thinking, hey, there's four people out of 40 that are out there wanting everybody else to do what they want them to do. And the other 36 don't give a shit what the other four people do. Hmm. Wait. I think they call that anarchy. Hmm. Oh, we lost Jay Dredd. How handy. Oh, man. He doesn't support the dork table. I wonder why. <laughs> uh, okay, they're gonna they're gonna put up a, oh crying out loud nonsense about the NFL. Uh, uh, what you oppose an NFL game? Wow. I never did understand what the big draw to all that crap was in the first place. Organized sports is uh, well. Let's just say that it's not the most legal activity I've ever witnessed with my very own four eyes. <laughs> but it does draw the crowds. What are we going to do without football? Anyway, what I was getting at is the, the voting public seems to think that because they're told a majority of however many people begged to be noticed or recognized were counted and tallied and organized and out of the numbers came this whopping majority of 35 percent and those 35 percent managed to run the other 66 percent around and we have to do what they say and if we don't you know what they do they try to get us under arrested by the police and taken to jail and if they don't do that then they want fine money or you know i guess financial punishment is punishment but that's going way too far in in the society that we live in 
you know, considering the money isn't worth any fucking thing in the first place. Maybe we're getting off easy being fined by money and not direct. I don't know. What else could these guys do to us that would um, be as much of a punishment as a financial fine? Hmm. Let us ponder. Maybe maybe we could get the uh, RLM to come up with some ideas for this one because I've been punished enough for 50-odd years and nah, I'm done. They can take their punishments and their punishers and jump off the... Well, you know what I'm getting at. And if you don't think so, I don't know why you'd want to be on the dork table listening to crazy people talk about voting. <laughs> What if there was a NBL flash, the National Bongers League? Hmm. <laughs> well, it would have to be <laughs> international for one. And in the uh, in the competition structure of that particular kind of race, I'm what you call a lightweight. I weigh in at a cracking 135 pounds. So. I've always been blessed with the uh, the ability to make the most out of a morsel because of my size. So I'd be for it, but I mean, what would you? How would you compete? What would the point be? Hey, let's smoke until we don't want to bomb Syria. <laughs> Nibble, <laughs> sir, gave you a name. Hey, the National Bongers League is now going to be recognized at the dork table as Nibble. According to my wife and Gribner. I don't know. I say I'll give it a yay. And I don't usually vote. But when you got a good idea. Well, what the fuck? You got a good idea. And besides stalling around for Vinny gets, I don't know, kind of monotonous. But here's another thing I was thinking about. You know, they say act or react. Well, you know, you can't react first. You have to act first. Reaction is the second part of it. Now. Hold that thought. So, you're getting pulled over by the long arm of the law for no fucking reason. You have no idea what you might, may or might, may not have done. All you know is there's all these blinding blue and red lights everywhere. And then all the stories you've ever heard of people that had been pulled over by the police. Or maybe all the things that have already happened to you as a result of being pulled over by the police. But they love you. And they say so right before they pull the trigger, too. They do it because they love you. Hey, wait a minute. Somebody's talking all sweet to my wife on the RLM chat. And I'm going to get awfully jealous any minute now. <laughs> hey, Rob Works, what's up? <laughs> I think you're talking to my wife. If you're talking to me, I'm a little scared now. <laughs> mm. Anyway, when you hang around with all the smart kids, you're bound to have a little of that smart rub off and occasionally not look like a big old dork. <laughs> but anyway, uh, and what was I rambling? I was rambling about the police. The beauty of police is until the police have a direct effect into your personal life and all you ever encounter from them is the crap that you read on the the new, you know, see on the news, read in a newspaper, see on the internet, but you never actually have physical contact with them. Maybe you won the lottery and they're just avoiding you. Uh, maybe it's not your turn yet. Maybe they don't need the fucking money. But sit tight. There, there, uh, there's plenty of them, and I think there's more of them now than there's ever been in the history of life. More authorita to pound us into submission. And make us give them all the money. And I'm really pissed off about this more because it's fake money. It's not even real money. I don't, everybody's running around, oh, I've got this. No, I own a house. No, 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 no. No, you don't. When you read the documents closely with the proper legal advice, you will note <laughs> you don't own shit. You're a slave to the fucking state or they'll take it away from you. They call it taxes. Ah, Rob works as flirting with my wife. Hey, you know what? <laughs> From the distance you're flirting, you're, you're, you can't, hey, wait a minute, stop that. 
<laughs> it worked for for me when I was in Scotland. <laughs> what am I thinking? I gotta encourage my own demise here. Oh, I I know. I'm just having a giggle, Rob, waiting for Vinny to show up. Poor Vinny. He's another one of uh, the non-driving public, and when you don't drive, you either walk or you ride with somebody else that does. Now, I've taken the long road on this, and I haven't even been in a car, riding in a car. And I've been offered rides, and I say, no, thank you, I, I would prefer to walk. And people shake their head, and they watch me leave. But Vinny, he's a little further from town than I am, if you know what I mean. And uh, he requires the old gas-powered engine to deliver his ass and bring it back. Oh, wait, I said that backwards, didn't I? Take him and bring him back. Boy, this is a fucking dork nightmare. Thank you, Vinny. Um, hmm. Well, I'm like a dog chasing a ball, you know? I go out, I chase the ball, I bring it back, and I forgot ex What the hell was I doing? You know, it, have you ever noticed that with your dog? You throw the ball, the dog runs out and gets the ball. Not Hannah, but other dogs. And the, ball, the dog goes, gets the ball, brings it back, drops it at your feet like... It never did anything. And these fucking animals can run all day long. It is frightening. It is a lazy man's nightmare to wake up. Hey, can you imagine that? Wake up with the energy of a dog, but the mind of trust number one. <laughs> that would be frightening. I'd be voting for other people to do my job. <laughs> hey, I made a joke about Mr. Trust No One. Uh... Yeah, well, you know, Grimner, those are the price that I pay. Those are the price. Wow, I can't can't even speak tonight. That is the price that I pay in life, my friend. I am just lucky like that. And, okay, well, you know, plus I'm a little older, too. So I've, uh, I have matured in the exterior department, less the length of the hair. But, you know, otherwise, it's grayish. My beard is gray. I'm small, so I don't know. I guess uh, I don't feel like I'm going to be 59 next week, but I think I look it, you know, in the eyes. My eyes have taken a pounding. I got terrible eyes. Can't see without glasses. Oh, it's a horrible thing. It's like being Vinny without a computer. Hope all the nuke plants can... Continue running through the storm unaffected. Java doctor said that. Well, you got to remember one thing, Java. They're only they're only designed to do certain things. <laughs> my my wife is writing me little notes about the show. Thank you, honey. I needed to know that. <laughs> anyway, act or react. You can't can't do one or the other, can you? You got to choose one, but. You got to act if you're first and react if you've seen an act, right? Have I got this straight? <clears throat> yeah, Rob Works got me all flustered on the dark table. I feel like Bullwinkle today. Oh. Anyway. Hey, Rob, watch me pull a rabbit out of my hat. Um. <laughs> I know, I have musical interlude for my blues fans. Thank you. See you next tour. And that was a Stallone quote out of um, Rhinestone when they were trying to make a <laughs> yeah they were trying to make a country and western singer out of a New York taxi cab driver. That's like what the hell would the the comparison be? Um, making s silk out of a sow's ear. One of those Jew Jew um, old timelines. Do you rem you remember what it is? You can't, well, you can't get blood out of a stone, <clears throat> but with a stone, I can get as much blood out of you as I want. <laughs> Never mind. That's, violence will not be tolerated. We have a zero violence tolerance at the dork table. <laughs> my wife killed my joke. Oh, well, we're stalling for Vinny because Vinny wanted to, uh, Oh, yeah, that Rob works. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask. Yeah. Hey, take my wife, please. Who do I look like? Rod What's his name? Rodney Dangerfield. I get no respect. No respect at all. Ugh. 
I bought a used car last week. Uh, guess what I found in the back seat? My, never mind. <laughs> I don't. I don't think. I don't think you can react. Can you react to yourself, Grimner? That's an interesting point. I've never pondered it, because when I'm alone, there's nobody to talk to but me, and that would make me feel kind of weird thinking about that alone. So I would need other people to interact to even have the conversation. So, we are going to ponder the meaning of life, liberty, and the pursuit of property right here on the Dork Table program with your friends and family. Bring them all down. Hey, you might have to tie them up and force them to listen, though, because I say things people get pissy about. Hmm. Oy, what do we got going on on the RLM? Very much, mostly just the stalling for Vinny thing and making little one inside jokes about me and Sir. <laughs> but I can take it. You told me what? My wife wants me. I guess I could open it up and read it. I will try to read the Patriot Act. Let's see what I get when I type it into the old, uh, what do you call that, um, the bar thing at top that looks up shit, you know, the, the box that you type into that you put shit in there and it goes, hey, this is it. Now, we've got the pa I guess I should ask for it in text. Let's see what that brings. We will bring rain. Use Patriot Act 2001 text. What did I get here? The Patriot Act. Ah, just a little box from Google, I think. Eh. So, uh, I don't know. 9-11 was like not a good day for a lot of people. Did anybody notice or was it just me? Well, the Jews made a lot of money. I know that much. You know, you could have made just as much money betting against the airlines on 9-11 as you could, um, I don't know, say, buying the Twin Towers before it accidentally got attacked by foreigners in a cave in Afghanistan. For no particular reason, either. These, just, these were just some nasty Arabs that don't like America. They are jealous of your freedoms. Well, they hate, no, they, they hate you for your freedoms. Life, liberty, and property. That's right, and they changed it to happiness because there is no fucking way on God's green rock that any one of us is ever going to seriously own a piece of property. That's a, that's a dream from, I don't the days of the kings. And all the society's ever done is just polish the turd so that we would think we have something that we truly, if you read the freaking fine print and get a, uh, an, an understanding of what it truly means, you go, wow, man, they didn't even take this fucker out of the box. They just shoved it right up my butt side. I can feel it tickling my ribs here. But the population does not have, uh, they don't have the wherewithal to stand for their own for nothing. So, you either you fight or you leave. And circumstances allowed me to get the fuck out of that place is the way I see it now. It's like a madhouse. And uh, the insane are actually running. And I'm positive that if you look at the country I'm in from where you're at, you'll probably find the same exact fucking thing. Now, of course, it depends on the press that you read, the links that you see. The upbringing you had, your indoctrination, there's so many variables to uh, describe a foreign land. Hmm. Now that I'm in a foreign land, and I'm a foreigner in the foreign land, it's not so bad. I kind of like it. I wish I would have uh, had the opportunity to take this away from America thing this far to where it was, uh, I wouldn't recognize my life anymore if it wasn't the way it is. I'm used to what I do. It's normal to not be able to understand what the fuck anybody's talking about. And I don't care. No, there's never a problem comes uh, like there was in the States. The States is the uh, really the only uh, common ground we have. 
and complaining about it. I lived there for 50 out of 59 years. Maybe maybe 51. I'm can't, I've never quite done the calculations to to be uh totally right about the amount of years, but I know it's around 8. I'm thinking maybe 9. Mm. And though it's a small percentage of my life to spend away, you know, it's still I don't think I have that kind of total recall people brag about. You know, oh, I remember this, and oh, I remember. I have very vague memories of childhood. And Christ, I think most of my 20s, <laughs> I can't remember. Uh, because of the moves, where I was, what year. I have to sit down in front of a piece of paper with a pen and actually write it all down. What month was I in this state for how long? And, and it was not an average ordinary uh, life people that i would meet would say where where are you from and there you go where i would be standing would surprise them why you're from la and you came here what in the world were you thinking <laughs> and i think i was kind of doing what vinnie did without the um, phone and the internet all i have left is the memories of you know what i did and that covers most of us that are in the age group because the internet and the phone didn't come along until way into the 90s for me. I was uh, not financially secure in the first five years of the 1990s. I was uh, hmm, average folk, maybe even below average for financially. Didn't do very well with money for uh, for a while. Then I started a business with somebody, and things changed. But then the partnership fell apart. So I learned a very valuable lesson in that, and that was doing commerce at any level for any reason will always bring you rain. Now, that's me. Other people find chasing money a a great thing to do. They think they're... uh, accomplishing stuff and they're buying things and they're owning and they're paying their taxes and they're being a good citizen and all this other fantasy land shit we get you know forced down our throats i suppose i didn't ask for any of it if anybody would have said to me when i was 12 years old do you want to grow up like this i would have said no (laughs) wait a minute you know in fact I, i did say no and yeah, it wasn't very popular. And today, after all these years of just existing, it's still not very popular. But there is a home for it. And I think the RLM might just do just fine. There are folks, let's take a few minutes to talk about some of the fellas and ladies on the RLM channel. Let's see, we got Cowboy Tech popped in. He's uh, he's saying time flies when you are having fun. And Cowboy Tech, he puts up some of the best informative links that you can find about money, politics, whatever the topic he brings into the room. Top of the line stuff from Cowboy Tech. I recommend his links to people that are still wavering on the indoctrination and they still believe to some level that, hey, the government will save us. Well, if you still believe that, follow Cowboy Tech around for a couple of weeks and at the end of those couple of weeks, tell me where Cowboy Tech is wrong on the RLM main feed. I'll, I'll listen to you. I won't even I won't even type anything except okay and yes. Ask my wife. She knows all about that. <laughs> Ah, uh, we are still waiting for the Vinny Souffle to show up and save me from me. But um, anyway, mm. let's see. Now, I kind of like to say a few nice words to some of the folks in the RLM. I don't think uh, I've ever tried that before. And I'm going to skip around Grimner because he's the big cheese and everybody kisses his ass and I don't want to do it. Fuck you, Grimner. You wait your turn. We'll do it in alphabetical order but we're gonna start with z just to make you wait (laughs) anyway we got rob works the um left wing lunatic uh what you call it what's that left he's the uh liberal left wing liberal lunatic rob works that's what i've read about you rob on the rlm (laughs) that's from somebody that obviously does not pay any attention to the stuff that you write 
or perhaps it's the links that you post about the the police and all the good works that they're performing out there on the behalf of the voter. Thank you, voter. You have no idea how much I thank you for supporting the police, Mr. Voter, Mrs. Voter. Ah, who else have we got? Is that enough, Rob? Or, yeah, I, eh, Rob's okay. I just I could pick on him because I like Rob. I think I pick on the people I like the most, except Hansel. Hansel and me, that, that stuff is just banter bullshit to kill some time and have an argument about a, an imaginary thing called government. We all know that. Anyway, Java Doctor. Java Doctor's been over on um the new world truth real liberty uh, what is it yeah real liberty dot org uh, my head gets filled up with all these names and numbers but i think i pulled that one off okay we but java doctor yeah he knows his shit on this here rlm yeah well we're a little behind rob works and i was being a smart ass to you but you you have uh you have the best information on uh, say the police i would go with if I want to know what the hell's going on with the police, I'll go follow Rob Works Links around and he's got this shit figured out. Uh, my wife, well, I always brag about my wife, so we're going to skip her like we skip Grimm and just go on and see who's hanging around. Trust number one. Hey, that he, that he's the guy that, what does he do? He roots on that um, Trump dude, right? <laughs> no, trust number one. I don't think he's uh really committed himself to anything. He's comes around the room, has a lot of fun, tells some stories about shit. But I don't know. I'm not gonna lose any sleep over any of the wacky stuff that trust number one says. Uh, he's all right with me, Miss Chloe. Hey, there we go, Chloe. Chloe, that says it all. What after you hear that? What more? Do you need to know? You have been informed. Inside job 911 is Ant. Oh, we got a new player. Hey, Ant. Yeah, I was talking about the uh, some of the folks on the RLM that I know. You know, I know them through the internet. Some of them I know through um, actually meeting them. And that in itself is, wow. And we were supposed to have an, a friend that, that lives in Canada come back and visit us again next week i think right on my birthday so i'm going to be having a special guest over here with my wife on my birthday so i get to be a birthday boy and, and have a party ah oh, Vinny's trying to get in all right i'll be looking forward to that because anyway uh hey aunt yeah aunt runs uh he does his shit over at real liberty dot org no anthony yeah, anti is anti, but uh, inside job nine one one is ant from realliberty dot org. We've officially NSA you. <laughs> and yeah, no, sir, don't please don't get into it from the couch. Stay on the couch, wife. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Ant, for fig or Anthony, not Ant. Oh, wait a minute, I'm confused. Now I thought that was Ant from the other from the other site, but oh well. <laughs> We're trying to stall until my nine one one partner can get here, because I think Vinny had something up his sleeve to yak about tonight in particular. Uh, because doing the show on the 9-11 anniversary was just a fluke because I seem to like Tuesday night. I don't have really know why I liked it, but I went, hey. Grimner was posting. He goes, nobody wants to do anything on the weekdays. So I went, hey, I'll do it. And a year later, <laughs> here I am actually fucking doing it. I, I had the hardest time learning how to use this stuff. It was like... Uh, it makes Danish look like it's easy, the computer. Now, Vinny, Vinny will show up. Vinny knows where his bread is buttered. Right? No, that's another... I'm butchering all the good old lines. Mm. Anti is anti-everything. 
I would assume. What? How else could you be anti if you were pro anything? You know, you'd have to be Congress, and we all know that's just a group of gorillas pretending to not throw shit at each other. Hey, you guys really get into all this voting crap and believe all that, um, all that dr- drivel and nonsense that comes out of these fucking suits in Washington, D.C. that sit your future. You're drinking fucking fluoridated water. Not you, but people. And it's not just the USA that's fallen for this shit. There's GMOs in the food supply. Look look what they do when they grow this shit. They spray it with freaking Franken weed killer. It, it's insane. When then when you try to explain all these things these people do are not necessary, they'll argue with you and sell you that you're full of shit. And I can prove with one link that all of this great big agriculture crap is just a big scam and we're getting fucked again. And the reason I bring that up, I think I will open the link of which I speak and post it on the RLM right there for the world to see if I can find it. Because it's about uh, a man in Nebraska. He's a farmer. And what he did, I know I've got it copied somewhere. I sent it to somebody. So I'm going to just copy that one and post it. But, uh, there's a farmer in Nebraska, and what he's done is figured out how to actually grow his vegetables and trees bearing fruit underground. I thought, wow, I never you know, I never heard of that. So I saw this link, and I opened it, and I, whoops, I think I'm going to accidentally play it if I'm not careful. Uh-oh, we're very bad with this computer. Okay, I stopped it in time. Now... To go back to the RLM chat where the world revolves around, we're going to post this here link here. I don't usually do this kind of crap. But the uh, the title of it, Nebraska Retiree Uses Earth's Heat to Grow Oranges in Snow. What they don't tell you in the title is it's snowing outside, but he's underground. And if you spend a few minutes watching this and... If you can watch this for two minutes and not feel the desire to watch it to the end, I would be amazed. And it takes a lot to get my attention because I have seen so many things. Oy. Boy, talk about links. Some people and their fucking links. You just want to like block them because all they do is, ever is post shit. But they don't ever seem to look at anything uh, other people's shit. But hey, that's life, man. You got what do you call them? Uh, grandstanders. That's why I do the radio. When I want to be the center of the world, I start a radio program. And there I am, talking to myself like a wackadoodle for two solid hours about absolutely nothing. But it makes me um, makes me feel good. <laughs> Maybe it's a mental disorder. I'll bet the I bet the AMA would probably have me on some kind of hard ass. What do you call them? Psychotropic drugs for my own safety. Because, <laughs> you know, I'm, I might smoke some pot and have a cup of coffee and eat some cookies and maybe watch some TV with the wife. That, those are the horrible results that I get personally from my marijuana addiction. Because <laughs> this will crack you guys up. There are a few people out there <laughs> that, <laughs> that their their minds have been trained to bypass the need for the medicine in the first place. You already have a desire for this shit, this um, weed product, right? This crap that we do. And we're told not to do it. Well, that usually works with like what? Maybe seven or eight out of ten people will go, oh, they said not to. I ain't going to do it. And then you got the other two or three. They don't give a shit if you want them to do it or not. And one of those two is going to try it just because you said not to. And the other guy don't give a shit one way or the other. So maybe one out of ten people are attracted to that um, that negative side. And the rest of us just smoke weed. It's um, I think it's an internal thing. I think we know we're not all on the same wavelength of... Um, 
of information, uh, same wavelength of uh, reality. <laughs> Some people think I live on a different planet. I mean, it's all a matter of perspective. But my perspective is my body actually craves this shit and it does me a world of good because the older I get, the uh, the last six, seven, since I got off the medication thing, they trapped me on that high blood pressure thing. I fell for that hook, line, and sinker. And what I found out in the end, which most people don't believe because they're, um, they're, they're convinced that they're not being... Um, they're not being lied to by the state. The state wouldn't do a thing like that. Well, maybe the state wouldn't, but Big Pharma would. And all the state is is just a bunch of lawyers making the crime legal so that they can you know, deal with it in court and in 10 or 20 years after they've spent all the money they stole from you. So by the time you get a judgment from all this crap they've done to you, you're too sick and too old to even do anything about it. So they win. And the only way to fight this is to not participate in it. But everybody that I know, everybody that I hold dear, does. In uh, financially. And there's no way around it. We've we've bannered and barked and bitched about anarchy and government and all this crap. And all it boils down to is human beings are taught from the earliest of years that how useless and helpless and alone we're we're nothing and we can't do oh we need these other wiser smarter people that wear black robes and dance around a dead skull to tell us what is okay or without them we would what well, we would perish hell what what would we do without scotus to rule we'd be a a blithering oh wait maybe we are exactly what they're telling us we would be without them is actually in truth what we are with them <laughs> oh, speaking of useless um, I don't know who Betty Bowers is never forget that Donald Trump traditionally commemorates September 11th by bragging that it made his building the tallest in New York City yeah what a fucking pompous cunt that prick is I wouldn't want to be caught in an elevator alone with him. I'm I'm afraid I'd have to be imprisoned when the doors opened. <laughs> I think I'd get violent with a prick like that, locked in an elevator. But luckily for me, I don't I don't live in that kind of world. I got me a nice peaceful life, like Mr. Meisterbrow. Oh, we was talking about the the personalities on the RLM that I that I associate with, and Woody. I did radio with Woody. Woody is a rather friendly sort of fella with some mighty confusing input regarding politics. But I think he's a little pissed off at the school system. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. Uh, I might be making too much of this, but I have noticed him write a few things that sounded a bit negative regarding the education system. Other than that, I'd... Man, if I was a voter, I would want Woody to be the president of the world. He would run everything with a, a iron fist and a thirty-eight in the other hand. But, hey, you know, not everybody can uh, handle the crowd like Woody can. How's that, Woody? Was that a good one? I thought that was fun. Oh, he's on the second ball since he's been here. Here's to my health. Oh, thank you, Mr. Woody. Ah, uh, he found a Rottweiler hair. Whoa, you never saw anarchy in Somalia. See, I mean, people write the strangest things. I've never been to Somalia, so I wouldn't know. Maybe there's a village in Somalia that doesn't do anything with the outside world, and they live in anarchy. And the reason they survive is because they don't do fucking anything with the outside goddamn world. We are dangerous. We lie, we steal, we cheat, we group up in fucking gangs and invade your fucking country and bomb you. Hoo-hoo. Human beings, man. Wow. I, maybe that getting kind of that human, that human being thing, the whole control over to take you away from your living, hum, your living man 
and making you a human so that we could be compared to animals. It's easier to, humans are just animals. Whoa, I don't want to be compared to an animal. Mm. I know you can teach a chimpanzee to play Pac-Man, but you can put five chimpanzees together and they can't design the game. <laughs> so I think man's got the animals beat just, you know, a frag, just a hair. And then you get more than a hundred of these fucking men together and some magic fucking nightmare begins and somebody has to get greedy and decide that they deserve more than everybody else. And then the fun begins. And wow, if you try to live in a world where uh, you're fair to everybody else and, and you try to be honest in your daily activities, well, you're pretty much just looking to get chewed up and spit out like cornflakes. But here we go. Free fallen, star in building seven. How does a fucking building fall like that? And they claim there was no deaths in that building, and there were. Every lie they have fucking told has been exposed as a lie, but it's too late. Once, once you get a story out, people, whether they believe it or not, as, a, as an individual, as a whole, you're going to find yourself agreeing with the group, whatever your group is. And that's just the way the fucking thing rolls. You can't really do much about it. And I've seen people try to explain to me, oh, but the Twin Towers fell because the uh, the girders melted. Well, no, that's not how that works because jet fuel doesn't burn hot enough to melt steel. Just because steel has a melting point, don't assume that jet fuel, because it's got a fancy fucking name in front of it, burns hot enough to actually melt the shit. This place was built you, I was there. I saw this. It was huge. There's no way that one of those buildings could have been taken down by a plane unless you have no understanding about the details. And if you remember back, they cleaned up as much of the details as fast as they could, hauled it off, sent it off to China or somewhere, and had it destroyed. They did not investigate the fucking... Uh, the demolition site they did it on paper a bunch of second rate bullshit talk we got from the government like usual wish Vinny was here now he knows how to do that he knows how to talk shit about the fed he don't like the fed much either mr Vinny. he's got personal enemies in the uh internet world because of his uh radio stuff and his following the bundy thing so closely and reporting on it so that tells me that, you know, people are still going to, they're going to want to be accepted and go with the crowd. And it's another reason I don't give two flying fucks about your round globe earth. For one reason alone, and that supersedes all the rest, is I am one little guy on this fucking little bit of dirt. And I can't see past the trees on the hill. So I don't give a shit if I'm on a, a flying baboon. <laughs> I don't care if I'm on a tarantula, whatever the fuck this is, it doesn't matter to me at all, but it matters to everybody else. Those planes were fueled by thermite. <laughs> well, I cannot uh, understand how an aluminum plane can fly into a steel and, and con concrete uh, building designed to keep it out and get through it. No, that was bullshit. We were fucking scammed. I saw Bilbo outwit Gollum inside the mountain. Okay? It's all nonsense. Everything we're fucking told. Everything we fucking see. They tell... I saw President Kennedy get shot on film. And everybody else was telling me he was shot from the back. Years and years and years. Oh, yeah, he was shot by uh, Lee Harvey Oswald, shot him from the book's suppository. And, da -da 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 -da. and of course, here I am all these years later. And not only was it a, a, a bald face fucking lie, but it was proven things were changed, things were misrepresented to the public, people were threatened. There's a, a lot of shit that went into this. But at the time, what the world didn't have was 
instant communication. Okay, now we have instant communication. So, looks like the internet world could have blown up on the powers that try to run everything and, you know, and misdirect to do something and then blame this other guy for doing what they did. You know, everybody in politics over the years has done it. But uh, I think 9-11 was, uh, that, was an, that was a superior. But the, the evidence that shows, you know, who bought what around what dates and these financial transactions that took place follow the fucking money. And if that doesn't tell you what you need to know, then you're going to just believe some reason that a plane can be flown into that building and bring it down from the top. <laughs> no. Nah, not without a lot of help, but uh, it's a fun story. It's caused a lot of arguments. Um, it's caused a lot of war, sold a lot of bullets, I suppose. Um, yeah, the book suppository. Well, he was a man. He was one hell of a shot too, because the film I saw, Kennedy was moving backwards, but he got shot in the back of the head. So, hmm, magic bullet. <laughs> Come on, Vinny, you said you'd be back. This is a uh, half a show almost. And no Vincenzo. And he wanted to do a, a happy 9-11 and wishing you all the very best on this wonderful day because, well, <laughs> it's 9-11 somewhere. Ay, 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 ay. Ay. Oh, now we got Sock Puppet putting music on while I'm doing radio. That's kind of cool. Thanks a lot there, Sock. I appreciate that. <laughs> For your listening and enjoyment this evening, we have Love Me, wait, Let Me Love You, performed by Billy Blaze. Ha ha ha. Anyway, that was a commercial for Sock Puppet. Let's see. What, you know, what other accomplishments has the United States on its own half? You know, besides, let's see, we got 9-11, Waco, Ruby Ridge, uh, the SLA in Los Angeles. There was another one in Philadelphia where they fucking bombed somebody's fucking house. Bombed it. it. All this shit's all been on the internet, on YouTube. And I guess if you don't know and you watched any of this, maybe you just think it was um, propaganda to make you against the government. You know, it, the the public seems to be convinced that the truth is the lie, and the lie is the truth. Oh, yeah, see, now trust number one's going back to the building number seven. All the coincidence of Enron's paperwork being there when they were being sued, and uh, the, day, the day before, the Pentagon lost, um, what, $2.3 trillion. Oh, not lost, but couldn't account for it. Yeah, well, it's around here somewhere. Um, we just can't figure out who we bombed with it. So give us a few years and we'll get back to you. And all... <laughs> Rummy's fault. <laughs> Number one's on a rant, everybody, in the RLM chat about Donald Rumsfeld. Anyway, yeah, we have our knowns and we have our known knowns. Oh, of course, we have our unknown knowns, and oh, the known unknown knowns, and occasionally the unknown known unknown knowns, but we never have the truth. We just have these other things. And, wow, 320 million fucking people, and Donald Trump is the best you guys could fucking do. I was so, I think I'm embarrassed beyond, you know, people do openly laugh about Donald Trump here in the, the drinking establishment I go to. And, you know, part of me is still stuck on that. I was born in that bit of dirt bullshit. And I go, hey, wait a minute. And then I got to think about, yeah, it's Donald Trump. The guy's a fucking putz. There is nothing good to be said about Donald Trump and Freddie Town. And I've thought it out. And I I can't come up with anything. I mean, even that, even that, uh, the time when he was building the, the first Trump casino in, in New Jersey, in Atlantic City, you know, it's not about being fair with somebody financially to move them out. It's about moving them out to move you in. And I don't care who you are or what you represent, that, you know, moving somebody around like, a, like an inconvenience is wrong. 
It, it wasn't as though she went to Donald Trump and said, hey, can you build a casino where I live so I can sell my land to you? But for some reason, people are conned into this crap about, well, he offered her money and she turned it down. Well, because the obvious is, well, she wants more money. Not too many people are uh, homey anymore. And they don't think, hey, maybe that old woman just wanted to stay where she was until she croaked. But the press gets a hold of shit. And, you know, like uh, like that McDonald's thing where the woman burned herself with the coffee and people were laughing and hysterical. And what they didn't know about that, here's just another example of, of business and how the media lies to us, is McDonald's had been cooking their coffee at 180 degrees Fahrenheit to boil it and that is a lot of degrees to boil coffee it stays fucking hot for a long time if you boil it that hot and when you pour 180 degrees coffee on yourself not knowing it's that hot and you get burnt well legally you do have a leg to stand on so the the two or three thousand people that had filed suits against mcdonald's before this woman they'd put it off and they'd paid off and they'd done things to keep that cooking temperature. This was McDonald's big thing. They didn't just immediately after the first fucker got burnt go, hey, you know, we'll turn the feet, you know, turn the fire down and we'll cook it at a lower temperature. No, they continued to do it because they make so fucking much money that the payout on the damn lawsuit doesn't hurt their shareholders. And this is the world that we live in as a collective. Wow. And, and somehow people are insulted by the reality of mine that I don't want to live in that shit. Uh, you can call it country. You can call it where you live. You can call it whatever you like. It's still, if you can tolerate that kind of shit in your daily life, wow. I can't. Um, I'm not that tough anymore. I'm too old now and too pampered by, um, I guess... Um, <laughs> my wife yeah well i was trying to find a way around saying that but yeah that's pretty much the sums it up but life's always been good to me financially but there's other things in life that level you that money can't fix so i don't i don't uh i don't think i've had it any better or any worse than anybody else i just think my outlook as i've matured over my life uh, I calm down enough to acquire the surroundings that I've got because that's me. <laughs> Even though I type a bunch of weird shit and I do crazy crap on the radio for a giggle, but there's you know more than there's more to a person than what we see of them uh, on the internet or hear of them on a radio program. <laughs> Unless of course that person sets their self down, you know, uh, a page of guidelines to live by and all this unnecessary shit we've been conned into believing because we're taught that we're aggressive and violent and hateful and all this other shit. And if you think about it, overcrowding is what does that. And it, the less of the crowd you're in, the smaller the amount of other men and women you are around, the anger level drops. It's harder to be angry in a small group. People will fucking dump you like a heart. You know, get the fuck out, Charlie. And that's pretty much the reality. But the bigger the group grows, then there's more angry people. That that kind of kills the um, the good vibe thing that the, the happy people have going on. Because you can only encounter so many people at, at any given time. There's only so many people that could be around you. And, and here we are with those football games with 60,000 people watching it in a, in a stadium. Like, I, I don't know what the fuck they're seeing. They're looking at a screen. So they might as well just be doing it at home as far as I'm concerned. Because I obviously don't share the herd mentality on any level that makes any significance. I fuck, I get crowded in the store if there's more than 100 people in it. But I'm from LA and you think I'd have a tougher skin than I do. <laughs> but Denmark is I think softening me. 
you know, and all that going down to Freetown and seeing anarchy at uh, at a level of reality where it actually functions and people are nice to each other and, you know, there's no intrusiveness. There's some, uh, a picture of some fucking rules on a wall somewhere and the rest of it is people just know to behave themselves. It's just common to not be a dick. Now, if you want to be a... Uh, whoop, my Hannibal... My dog is saying hello to all the good folks on the RLM. Hey, shut up, you nut bucket. Oh, well. Uh, uh, Sock Puppet is in, is throwing in a comment about scarcity. Also adds to that, too. Yeah, scarcity is manufactured by man. We make all our own scarcity through government. Because you believe the lies that these fucking thieves tell us. There's there's enough land and enough people on the land now that if they would stop doing the negative shit that fucks us up, put us on the proper cycle, the 54 RPM cycle. I learned this from Larry Woods. I believe it. It makes good logical sense to anybody with an electrical background. They know exactly what the hell I'm repeating. And I worked a, a I drove cars. I worked on cars for, you know, small things. So I, I have the understanding of the, you know, the gasoline engine and how it works and all that. Well, Henry Ford, the first thing he built, well, not first, but he built a, uh, I think it was the first car he built, was made for hemp. In 1943, he made a car from hemp that ran on hemp. 100% fucking hemp car. And, uh, Big business went, no way, man. You buy one of these, you won't need another car. What well, fuck, what are you thinking? So well, they went, no, no, no. And here we are today. Have you taken a look at the fucking junk that they sell and they call cars? It's embarrassing. And they wonder why I don't want to ride in them. I remember the 1964 Mustang, man. I'm telling you. And then I had a family full of car nuts, so I either drove or rode in some of the damn wildest shit that you could ever imagine. I had an uncle that had a one of those 12-cylinder, what the hell kind of car was it? It was real long, like a Volkswagen, a German. It looked like a Volkswagen, but it had a fucking front end that was as long as a Pontiac. <laughs> I can't think of the damn name off the top of my head now. Because uh, we've been stalling for... Mr. Buying Food So He Doesn't Starve to Death for like an hour and two minutes. That's a long time. But this is what I do for giggles, so we're going to try this. Hmm? Oh, Miss... Wait a minute. I see Graham Z. Hello, Miss Mary. Are you calling me fart breath? Ooh, who's calling her fart breath? That's kind of fun. They're chitter-chattering on the RLM feed. That's what they do. And they're, I guess they're doing some stuff over on the other side. Have I got this right? Ant is um, from RLO is inside job 911. Or is that yet another Anthony I have not encountered? I'm confused. All these names make my tumor bleed. I'm telling you guys, if there's going to be a test, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to take it. Oh, and by the way, my folks, uh, the Jews, appreciate that $38 billion you put out every year so that they don't have to suffer, by the way, in case you didn't know. Yeah, oh, man, it's sad. And the Palestinians, they got cut so the, the Jews could get it, I guess. Hey, I got beeble beebled somewhere. I heard a blonk blonk. Maybe, uh, no, no, Vincenzo. I thought maybe it was my uh, Skypey. And I, no way, Jose, no Vincenzo today. Maybe there's, that's uh, 9-11's way of, of rewarding you is I, I'm doing this act alone and Vinny ain't going to talk over me. <laughs> Sad part is I think Vinny has a, a really good way of explaining some of this political and legal shit, you know, because he kind of thinks that way. He's more status than me. I live, I, I just can't seem to take this crap so seriously that it makes me sweat. You know, it's just a lot of stories and uh, 
the violence that I've seen has never been from uh, like wars, and I've never been at a war zone my whole life. All this traveling, I've yet to see a war zone. Never been, never walked in on a, a bank robbery. I missed all the good shit. Not, no, nobody's ever walked up to anybody and shot them where I was standing right next to me. Nothing excited has ever happened like that in all my life. But you know what I saw on TV? <laughs> Every week, somebody in that neighborhood was being, uh, not only were they being murdered, they were being caught for murder, tried, and imprisoned for murder. Every week. It was like a weekly thing. But I'd look around the school I was in at the time, and I'd count the kids in the class, and they were all there. And there, nobody was bringing notes. Oh, we're mourning the loss of so-and-so's mom and dad. They were shot to death last night in a drug deal. And all that crap all came from television. But after I grew out of high school, you know, well, my high school has ended young, but uh, 16 was the last I went to school. But still, at that point, they're still shooting at school. Nah, I never even heard of a fucking crazy idea like that. That, that was cooked up in the 90s by the Al Gore gang. Yeah, those politicians figured out how to drug us just enough to push the weak ones over the edge and fuel them through their, their wacky doodleness and give them all the information in the world to go out and arm up and shoot some people. And I'll bet you a buck there's a study out there to confirm that from the 1980s. These people are ruthless. Whatever we've seen has usually been the opposite of what we're told. Even though we saw it, they go, Oh, you didn't see that. No, 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 no. It was something else. You, sir, must be, you You need medication. Because you're not seeing what the rest of the herd saw. <laughs> Military freebies. Well, you know, Rob, that... At certain levels of military, that is just another fantasy. I lived amongst the working class uh, military in in Jacksonville for 10 years. And my neighbor, he was, uh, he had some kind of a, what do you call it, rank. You know, he he was an officer, not a high ranking, but like a mid middle, lower middle ranking officer. And his wife had contracted uh, MS. And the military just put them through the worst shit trying to prove that there was nothing wrong with her while she lost her ability to walk. It was like you didn't need to have a, an education to look at this woman and watch her while you're seeing a human being, a living woman, just... Uh, dissipate right before you now, of course it took a few years but the game the military played with her was well she doesn't have that disease so we're, we can't treat her for that until you prove she has it and then they fucked around with the, these symptoms well those could be symptoms of this disease which ain't that disease so you need to go now go prove this and they did this for years to this woman well in the beginning of her problem she found out that marijuana eased her problem and made her feel better she didn't help her walk or anything but it, it stopped her from shaking and she could drink a cup of tea and shit like that because she was starting to have physical reactions to this illness and uh when i left in 2011 she w she was no better and uh and we finally lost track when i got uh, booted off of um, facebook because that's where I kept track of the people that I lived around in North Carolina. And when I got booted off Facebook, I just went stupid and deleted the whole fucking thing and forgot to write phone numbers down that I had in the you know my information. And I deleted the whole thing. But, well, I got a new life out here in Denmark any damn way. And I was in Scotland, so it didn't really, didn't really much matter one way or the other. You know, it's not like I'm going to get any get younger you know, I'm getting older now so the the push for me is to be comfortable I don't want to be a slave to the man you know and have to do shit that, that nah I, I and I didn't even pay my dues but I didn't ever join your club 
I never voted. I never signed up for um, income tax. What else didn't I do? The only the only contracts I ever signed that I honored were the marriage contract. I've been married uh, before, but for one reason or another, the only one that seemed to work is the one I'm in now, and here we are. <laughs> but I don't hold uh, I don't really hold so much the uh, the contract as anything important. But I did consider that monogamy and having children and all that crap deserved. Uh, a certain face, you know, because we live in this fucking make-believe world where people judge you by your appearance. They don't even have to know you. They can look at you across the room and they know everything there is to tell because you smoked a cigarette and this is a non-smoking area. Mm. I got Rob Works up here saying, I'd rather just listen to Flash. Whoa, my ego just jumped 10 points. Whoops. Wow, that's good. That thank you, Rob Works. That's kind of cool, because I didn't see again. If I'd have had a plan, I've done this before alone without really being uncomfortable. But through that, I had some design and wrote a few notes to follow through. Tonight, I was just gonna get stoned and talk to Vinny about 9/11, but uh, Vinny, he's running behind. He said he'd probably be late, but you know, Vinny, Vinny might not show up for a week. Which is actually, to me, the beauty of Vinny is he's such a free fucking guy. And I used to be that way, but I gave that up to be married. So now I'm, you know, I'm in a committed relationship. So I can't just, hey, I'm going to go hang out with Vinny. I'll be back in a couple months. Uh, what? <laughs> the wife, she would not be okay with something like that. <laughs> but if Vinny was to come over here to Denmark, he could hang here for as long as he likes. Because that's just the way the we weave people be you know um i don't know america has um taken on a personality of its own and it's not a pretty personality because chemical attacks in syria that were staged and you know israel always fucking invading some other country and it, they invade and occupy and they're backed by the majority of the fucking world because they've got this goddamn con story about how they're the special chosen fucking people and that's their fucking land. And if you look back far enough, you'll find out that is a load of shit. You can prove it's all a bunch of crap, but it's a whole lot easier to follow the herd and give up the $38 billion and just go along. Because if you don't go along, you end up at the dark table talking to yourself about it. <laughs> It's a catch-22 from hell, I tell you. Let me read the chat. Perhaps I will find something interesting to tell you out there in Radioland. Let's see. Let's start with Fluke. Fluke posted something. Press TV Israel opens fire on Palestinian boats in Gaza. See, I mean, what the fuck? Always open and fire. You know, well, they threw rocks at us. Well, yeah, because you killed them. <laughs> they have rocks, you fucking gun-loving cunts out there. I swear. Arm everybody and may the best man fucking win. How's that for fucking reality? You know, either th ban the fucking things, use them. All this chitter-chatter bullshit talk. Just after all these years, I'm bored of it. I've heard so many guys, oh, I got 50 guns. <laughs> well, you know how many people have you murdered today, you fucking moron? <laughs> what are you supposed to do with a gun? If you don't act, you react. So what? What are you proving it? Who to? Some idiot in a suit in a fucking penthouse? What are you, how moronic could you possibly be that you're willing to get on your knees to a stranger you've never met because this guy's telling you he is in power. And you never question your, anything. In power of what? You know, really. What is this guy in power of? Nothing. Not a fucking thing. And you know that? Because they can change the player any day of the motherfucking week and the game continues the same way it started. It will end. Just like it's all, it's like unraveling 
It's been exposed. It's been talked about. And nobody does a motherfucking thing because there's just not enough of us to dent the fucking armor that these thieves wear. Let's follow along with the Grimner and Anarchy Bird. Hmm. I don't know what an Anarchy Bird would be. Hmm. I don't think that bird would be very good eating. No, fuck, that bird would have a fucking gun and shoot you. What are you, crazy? And people, they tend to think of anarchy as aggressive, and that's the media. Man, that's media and government cowering in a corner like the true cunts they truly are. Because if they spoke the fucking truth about anarchy and what it is, it is authority repellent from you fucking uh, the monkeys in suits with badges that think that because they said so they can just jack you up and take you off to a box and lock the door and there's other people that think that's okay and i don't get why i think it's because they're a bunch of weaklings and alone they're so timid and afraid of the world that they need to see somebody around to protect them oh the world is gonna hurt me help help I mean, who in the fuck wants to live like that? And then if they do, what are you so proud the fuck of? I'm a coward, and if I don't have my my friend in the red hat to lead me, I am lost. Oh, you know, uh, it's it's all interconnected bullshit is what it is. Get us off the damn 60 cycle generator, and that would be the beginning of great changes. Once man can think clearly things start to improve for that man as you can see on the rlm chat sock puppet hey sock socks another one of those characters i like to banter with he's got his own fucking mind made up about shit you don't need to tell sock puppet shit you know why because sock puppet he will tell you <laughs> that's why i like sock he stands his fucking ground johnny there you go. And nah, maybe some people stand their ground and they're still full of shit. But I won't name that one. We all know who I'm talking about. That uh, hang out religiously at the uh, RLM grill and bar and grill. <laughs> RLM bar and grill. Where would we be without authorita in the first place? What? I don't think we have authorita. Until it engages us. And when it engages us, it's always aggressive and violent. And I mean that in the terms of either financially or physically. And there's no way you can approach another man, woman, or child regarding two things. Space and money without invading them. That's what you're doing. Well, there's a lot of people out there that think that's just okay because they're checking for illegal aliens coming across the border and we're out here in the middle of Kansas, but by God, they're going to find them. Yeah. Oh, that brings me to, to ah, the wall. <laughs> Didn't any of you guys ever see that movie, The Wall? It's not a good thing. You'll see. Maybe they're going to use, like, Democrats and you know, put meat grinders up on the top of these walls instead of concrete, and they just fill them full of dead Democrat grinds. <laughs> this this thing's not looking very... <laughs> it's funny as hell, but it don't look so good. Hey, man, I'll flip you for a wall. <laughs> I'm going to build a magnificent wall. Oh, the best wall. You'll, you've never seen a wall like the wall I'm going to build. And ha has there even been a road made has has there even been a design of where they're gonna build this fucking wall <laughs> and then getting roads to the great places they're gonna build this wall it, it's more insane than just shooting people at the border they should just get the military out of the middle east bring them all back put them on the fucking mexican border just start shooting until you run out of bullets and stop your fucking whining about illegal aliens it's it's a bunch of nonsense the government is the very fucking organization that makes it happen and then the population gets mad because the government that they voted for made it happen what is wrong with these people 
Oh, I sound like the guy from the Wayseer Manifesto. Hey, that's kind of cool, Inside Job 911. I like that. Ah, uh, Vince Sock Puppet. He says I sound like Spicoli. But, you know, to each his own. I don't know. I go, I go the way that I go. Ah, uh, let's see here. Uh, wait a minute. I think they're talking. Uh, Grimner, somebody sent somebody a message on here. I don't know. Yeah, that's grim. Okay, I got crazy for a minute. Lost my train of thought. Trying to read something intelligent. And all I keep running into is a bunch of jokes about my voice. Ah. Mm. Well, that's kind of nice, though. I get complimented. I feel special. And, you know, next week is my birthday. Uh, next week. Wait a minute. No, two weeks. I forgot I'm not on Saturday. I'm doing a Tuesday. This is Tuesday, the anniversary of 9-1-1. What that means in so many words is, yeah, it was this day in 2001 where your rights were surrendered on your behalf for your safety and security. You lucky people, you. Ah, man, I, I remember that. I was in L.A. the day that happened. Let me reminisce about 911 the way I remember it. Now, at the time, I was living with a house full of folks in a place called uh, Canoga Park, California, out in the valley. And <clears throat> one of the people in the house was a nurse going to work early in the morning and I remember uh, watching TV and she's leaving for work and said something to me about hey see you later and I said it's going to be a bloody Tuesday okay and went back to watching my TV finally I fell asleep for a little bit in a few hours I get a phone call and this friend of mine is saying, hey, the New York Towers just had an accident and a plane flew into it. You got to put your TV on and see this shit. So I did. And it had been long enough that it had, after the first one hit that it was just before the second one that I turned on. So I turn it on and I'm seeing the second plane hit the second tower. That's whatever time it was when I finally woke up. So, hmm. First thing I thought is no fucking way. Okay, I saw it happen. The whole world saw it happen. Tra la 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 la. Then building three falls. Hmm. I saw that building fall before the girl announced it was gonna fall behind her. It fell bef before she said it was gonna. It was very fucking weird. I don't. I don't know. Maybe I was on drugs. Maybe I. Maybe it's just the way I remember it. Who is to say? But. The things that I saw didn't make any sense. I went, no. Then they were saying a little bit later, oh, the Pentagon was hit. I went, wow. So I saw that. And again, no plane wreckage. Where, Where's the plane? Every fucking plane crash I've ever seen, witness, been witness to through media, has always managed to show some fucking part of the plane that fell. You know, that... Uh, got destroyed in the crash or whatever well here's this one particular plane it's magical plane you guys you ready for this it hits the freaking pentagon and the only thing that survives the impact and the dev the devastation of this plane is the passports of the terrorists that flew it into the building <laughs> come on you guys <laughs> You gotta know. You gotta know. <laughs> How could you not know? I mean, well, I guess when I was eight years old, I was ahead of the curve because my father had years before that. My uncle would try to scare me and my little brother in our room at night, and my dad would sneak in the room before he could get outside and go, "Hey, that's your uncle Alan trying to scare you. Don't let it bother you. He just just ignore him. He'll stop." <laughs> so. Having that kind of shit, you know, taught to me when I'm a little kid, well, the older I got, the harder it was to bullshit me. And I've never seen anything that came of or 
had anything to do with 9-11 that wasn't based on some second-rate bullshit story. It might have like 10% of the truth in it, but figure out what part was true. And legally, there it's not moral and it's not ethical, but it's legal to be to tr- be treated that way by the the people that are voted into office to make life decisions for the population and all these fucking maggots are doing is killing us what's wrong now sweetie hey you take you can't take that make another one she was trying to rob me of my gold (laughs) you know how it get when you mess with my jew gold honey i get all paranoid because when you mess with the jew gold well, there, there you go. My people don't like it. I wonder what the fuck that is about being Jewish anyway. I mean, as far as a, a reality, I'm not Jewish. But as far as a, a, a nose, it's amazing how the old Jews all always know that I'm one of them because they, the older ones will make some kind of contact, eye contact, smile. And usually they're people that, if you saw the two of us next to each other, you wouldn't have any idea why the fuckers were even in the same room together. Hmm. Oh, it's fucking magic, Grimner says. Well, I say that whatever it was, it was a demolition job because if you see this, what still they could take, they didn't get everything right away. They were still filming it. And if you look back, you can see where there are level cuts. This is demolition work. You don't bring you don't bring that building to not two of them two of them, fuck. I've seen demolition crews try to do that and do it wrong, and buildings fell. How do you manage a, a controlled demolition? Those places. How do you compare? I think it was like uh, the twin towers property were sixteen football stadiums put together, if in one mass. So two buildings there was so there was a lot more buildings but the two towers took up a lot of the of the building property but not all of it i mean look at the distance from seven to one and two in the first place and i forget which one was closer to seven one or two i don't know how they numbered them i just know that the government don't like us very much they want us to all be slaves and beg for rats privileges like a bunch of prison inmates that deserve a good overlooking because we can't be trusted by god and country we might do something to somebody and i don't know how that concept got brought to the fucking forefront and being a free individual got buried alive like it's some kind of a horrible thing to do by God and country, if you don't support America, there is something wrong with you. And I'm, I've, uh, I've grown to believe over the years that if you do support America, there is something freaking seriously wrong with you. You are not seeing life the way true. The way life is really happening is eluding you at some level, and you're missing all the fun of. Wow, these people are fucking barbarian and need to be removed. But there's not enough of us yet to do the job. This thing needs to be abandoned at best. I mean, at very best, abandon it and stay local. The global thing is going to crush everyone. And maybe not everyone. There's always a mortality rate to a major disaster. No, it doesn't matter what it is. Nuclear, they've shown it. We might come out of this with an extra eyeball. But there are going to be some of us that get through this. And it doesn't matter what you do to man. Man will man will come back and be stronger the next time around. You know, And I think that's what they found out with the, uh, the mixing of the bloods at the time when it was new on mass scale was like the end of the 50s when they finally got the airplanes going. And they could bring the... Yeah, the European and the UK women over to America and they can marry the soldiers. I was a product of one of those their relationships and uh, according to the uh, the reading material the mixed breeding that far that distant kind of mixed breeding would would breed 
a smarter, taller child. Now, with my brother, he more or less ended up with the taller. Not to say that he's a blithering idiot. It's just he's not an Einstein. He's more like a Weinstein. But me, I did very well in the academia shit until I got tired of them bullying me around and telling me what to do and said, nah, I don't want to learn it. It's a bunch of crap. And and walked away. I was like 12. And uh, I turned out okay on my, you know, on my balance sheet, on how I see things. But other people have opinions. You know, and their opinions are based on everything they see and everything they know. Well, you don't know anything special, Mr. Anonymous guy out there in the world. You're just as freaking in the dark as I am. We just know stories of things that we're told, and we've either been to those places or we haven't. And if we haven't, we're trusting other people that they're not, you know, giving us some bullshit story like 9-11 and how the Taliban took the Twin Towers down and Building seven, well, that just got, I was caught on fire and fell. All these magic things that people will tolerate hearing from their superiors in government and the educated. As long as these fucking people lie to you in a big enough group, there's always going to be enough monkeys out there to fucking support it. How do you ever get the fuck away from that? I don't know. I'm all the way over here in Denmark, and I'm still, to some degree... Not so much a victim, but aware of the state around me through electronics and cameras and public transportation and all that crap that they shove down your fucking throat for your own good when it's really about controlling you. But So, I'm going to continue my boycott on oil. Big oil doesn't get my gas money, hasn't got my gas money since. Well... Damn, the last time I paid a taxi, I suppose. <laughs> I don't I don't know. But, uh, you know, it didn't dent big oil like I thought it would. <laughs> I thought they'd notice that I wasn't buying fuel. They don't know. I w- would like everybody on the RLM to write your congressman and tell them that I stopped using their damn gas, lower the prices, <laughs> for the good of mankind. You know, it would even be better ideas. If they just give up this oil fucking shit nonsense and this nuclear crap and all these other imaginary fucking answers they've got for everybody and go back to the 1900s, the early 1900s when they had the fucking truth right in front of them and start fresh and just obliterate, like, not obliterate, but mentally forget the last hundred years ever happened. (laughs) That might be a... That might be where you're going to have to go anyway. If they nuke us, we'll be there any fucking way. So you're going to be stuck in this thing with your your peers in your community and all those motherfuckers that you look at and spit on today. Tomorrow, should there be a disaster, you're going to be hoping they're your friends. And I know this from personal experience of uh, Hurricane and what the other one was, um, Earthquake. And maybe you might, in your little military mind, think that uh, violence is somehow different than Mother Nature. I I would say that violence and Mother Nature going awry seems to bring either the best out of people or the total fucking worst out of people. And when you have a small community, the guy that's got that worst you know, behavior, he ain't going to hang out too long. You're going to get rid of him because he is a, a deficit to the success of the community. So people tend to behave themselves in a more rational way. And they're whether they're aware of it or not, it happens. I had neighbors I would argue with about fucking music, for fuck's sake. But when we had that earthquake that night, all that music crap was all finished. Now it was, is everybody got water? You know, is anybody hurt? That kind of crap. Cause it was a four, uh, four floor building. I think it was three, maybe three. Well, it was three or four and we had neighbors. So instead of the, the arguing about the noise went to, Hey, 
Is anybody need to get to a hospital? Is anybody leaking? What could be wrong? We were we were approaching those things. And there's a few people in the world that they they promote this fucking violence and war and devastation and play it off like it's some kind of a good thing. Somebody somebody is saved or somebody no, it's all a bunch of crap to make bankers money to sell bombs what how fucking stupid do you have to be to not see what comes from a bomb and they sell them by the hundreds they move them by the hundreds at a million dollars plus a pop what do these idiots that support this think these bombs are going to go out and accomplish i mean as human beings sure dogs don't fucking know dogs sniff each other's asses for fuck's sake but a living man, a living man should know the damn difference and understand that that is a zero, it's a, it's, it's a no-win game. Everybody loses. Maybe the bankers make money or whatever illusion that is. But the people that actually play in this crap physically, they, they get fucked over mentally. They're for it. They get fucked over mentally because they're against it. Whichever, either side of that coin you fall in, you got opposition that's going to browbeat you and make fun of you and give you crap for what you believe. And the bankers don't give a shit. They just write these laws just broad enough so that when they get caught, they can afford the fucking fines. And think about that. They pay the fucking punishment with the same shit they stole from you in the first place. So who gets punished? All these big businesses. Well, they find IBM $5 billion. And, uh, all right, so they find IBM $5 billion. But their stockholders own stock in the bank that the money that they got fined goes to. So who who lost what? It's a, This thing is just an, a creative accounting scam that's just gotten away. And... I don't see anybody going to do anything to collapse it. What they did was they come up with uh, e-currency. So they could, basically, they want control of every fucking thing. And the easiest way to control us is through the internet. So, sure, financially it's sound and all that. Oh, yeah, Bitcoin and this coin and that coin and all these other coins. But if you're not registered and and in their game and all that and play by these specific rules then there you go and i'm one of those weirdos that i don't want to have a card i don't like having a fucking uh, password to open up a site it's it's annoying to me to be that private and then you go well what about money eh, don't care about money money comes and goes i've had it lost it had it lost it gave it away got it back had it lost it there's so many things in life that I've learned over the years that are more valuable in the long run than, you know, uh, having a bunch of zeros at the end of a number on a piece of paper. I mean, it's cute and you can buy some fucking exotic toys and all that crap, but your toys belong to the fucking state because they force you to register them. It, it's a never ending game of thievery and deceit and they tell us it's for our own good and so far, if you haven't fallen victim of this fucking system yet, maybe you will. Maybe you won't. There's 300 million people in America to fuck with. So the few, you know, the few thousand that you have the wherewithal to read about or to remember, it's just a scratch in the amount of... There's 2 million people in prison in the United States right now. And they're... Uh, they just went on strike last month for slave wages because they're, ah, we getting slave lay wages and this, that. Now, here's the problem with that. They're in prison. Well, somehow society has been convinced that because you broke the law and because the state has you in a cage, that they have the right to take your... People think everybody's lazy. Well, you get bored and, and, and tired of sitting still, so, you know. You got to get up and do shit. That's just a human being. I get up and I go wander around. I find shit to do all day long. When my wife's home, I'm not so active. I sit on my ass a lot more. But when I'm alone, I, I find little things to keep me busy. Well, when you're imprisoned, 
to go to work to make some money, that attacks your deepest, I mean, all the shit, internal shit. You know, you're wanting to be around other people because we, we, uh, we thrive on companionship as, as mankind. People can only be alone for so much of the time when it becomes unhealthy to be alone. There's got to be a balance, and the state plays off it, and they bring in work, and then they pay these poor fucking people that are in prison pennies on the dollar for labor. <laughs> and they call it uh, they call it a job, and it's just slavery because you're in a box. There's your chance to get out of the fucking box for a while. Of course you're going to take it. And then here you got these do-gooders out in the world that think smoking weed is some big fucking thing against humanity or selling it or having it or whatever it it, oh yeah you got all your criminals out there well your police couldn't catch a fucking thief if they had to and you know that because every time they're doing anything they're pulling over some old grandma some kid working somebody driving without a license you don't see them going after anybody to do anything that's what the bounty hunters are for this is about taking people to court it's not about protecting anybody. It's not about bravery. It's about commerce. Commerce is your friend, I think. Oh, miss, I got Mr. Uh, Bitcoin going on the Bitcoin thing. Hmm. All I'm saying there uh, to trust number one and, and Grimner is not that it's good, not that it's bad, just that in my opinion, the way I look at life, it's just another way to, to herd and control us. We're just in a, in a one more invisible prison that we're building all for ourselves. And look at how free we are because we don't have to pay taxes. And da, 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 da. <laughs> but if any of this in, information we get about the Internet is true, there's bean counters out there collecting data to put you in a group and you know file you in a box and keep you listed under something for later reference because if they can okay there was a day when pot was just pot and then there was a new day when pot became legal and then there was another day that come pot became illegal now new day come now pot's legal again some places so I had to stop and think about that for a minute. You know what changed? Nothing. The fucking law changed. The weed was there the whole time. It's all an illusion. If you believe it, it's real. If you don't believe it, there you go. And of course, I get told, I live in unicorn, rainbow farting, tra-la-la land. And I may very well um, do exactly that because i'm the happiest fucking guy i know <laughs> i haven't had a bad day in years i have little minor inconveniences like my dog my dog is she's crazy she has this thing about me and cirque being in the same room all the time the dog does not like to be separate from the two of us when we're together so when cirque comes down to make coffee before she goes to work in the morning Hannah's got her tongue in my eye waking me up. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, man. It's. I know, I'm just doing the whole. No, he's not coming. But that's okay. I dork tabled alone. I've dork tabled alone before. He, well, my wife still wants me to read the Patriot Act, but I ain't got. Vinny has <laughs> punishment. Poor Vinny. Ah, uh, well. It must be good that um, Vinny's doing what he's doing because you know how much he loves to do the radio. So I'm not going to fault my partner in crime. I'm just going to tell him, you butt munch, you could have went shopping on a fucking day when you weren't doing radio. <laughs> but hey, there's so much, you know, logic and reason escapes all of us at some point. Maybe a minute here and a minute there. Oh, here we go back to... Never forget, Donald Trump traditionally commemorates September 11th by bragging that it made his building the tallest in the financial district. Mm. Isn't that wonderful? All these social games that we get played with us. I think that, I go back to that other one, Occupy. What the fuck kind of nonsense that ever was? 
it was it was crap from the start and then they spread it to the west coast like a like a virus and they, oh there's another good topic we, they're talking about satoshis but i don't do the i don't do the bitcoin oh i'm sorry my friend i could i could take five dollars and try to do throw it at the bitcoin and see if i can get rich hey when kelly was buying bitcoin it was like uh pound a pound of coin or something 2013 hey grimner do you know what uh what the uh bitcoin cost and it wouldn't matter what country you're in i would suppose but to the date would be uh the year 2013 say uh i don't know august of 2013 what was a uh, bitcoin how much did they cost because uh kelly was she bought a whole shitload of those things when uh when i had first started to hang out with her i knew her from the the store where she worked she knew my father and she knew my mother, so we started chit chattering and next thing you know we're having tea. <laughs> and she was a really nice kid. I, I really miss her still. But uh you know, she I don't remember her trying to talk me into or suggesting she wasn't a pushy she wasn't pushy with all that big brain. She would just tell me what she did. But never insist, well, I think this is a real good financial thing. You should try it, too. She wasn't like that. She was just, ah, I'm playing with this new coin on the Internet. It's called Bitcoin. And then uh, when she came to visit me in Cirque, she had said she'd use the profits from her Bitcoin to finance her, her visit. And uh, that was, that was um, 2014. So... I don't know. And it's not like uh, I'm anti-finance. It's just I feel in some part of me, I know I what I know about it, my living circumstances have pushed me away from participating in it. You know, even if they're uh, even if it was OK to, you know, because I'm a guest, and I don't have the proper documentations. You know, I d didn't do the I didn't do the the move here to look for any work it was never a thought in the first place but even if i had it i don't speak danish good enough to work in a job that could use me because you'd have to encounter people and deal with whatever problems they have and no say habla danish does not work go <laughs> hey what else is there my friend my wife says i'm talking too much maybe i should Stop talking. I don't know anything about the world except... Hi-ho, Silver, the lone dork, rides again. <laughs> Thanks, Grimner. Well, it's kind of fun, but, the, you know, the the way topics run, and then I'll see something in chat, and it takes my mind to another thing, and then I look over, and Cirque's doing a little knitting, and then I start talking about her, and, uh, and I got... Third, wait, hey, wait a minute. I'm almost to the end of this here program. I did pretty good. Mm. As I take a sip of my elixir. Anyway. Inside job 911. Got my modem frying from multitasking. Wow. I don't, I'm not sure what modem frying is, but if you put bacon on it, will it cook it? <laughs> hey. Woody, try that. Put your bacon on your modem and see what happens. <laughs> Experimenting at the dork table with food and electronics. <laughs> mm. Hold my beer. Watch this. Anyway, so we've got big major first world problems on the Real Liberty Media. Did you guys know that? Yeah? Not one person on the RLM. Well except for Slim Jim Flim Flim, lives outside. And Vinny's technically inside again, so he don't count no more. <laughs> my my redneck friend that lives in a trailer. Or a tr I don't know what he... He's got something cooking. But that's, you know, that's what freedom has done for him, is he gets to play out in the woods and, you know, and hunt shit or not hunt shit and, talk to squirrels all day and take care of people and Vinny's kind of a caretaker too he, he's got a neighbor he goes to visit he does like to brag about his good deeds because he's done so few of them 
that he wants God to know that he's trying. <laughs> huh, Vinny? <laughs> Probably listening out there too, you fucker. <laughs> Stick me with my own dark table. Ah! <laughs> mm. I like the Pink Floyd sock puppet because Jewish people can do street Pink Floyd. And until they start doing vocals, they do pretty good. I mean, for simple, you know, simple looking guys, they were, <laughs> I was impressed. But uh, Pink Floyd, wow. I don't know much about Pink Floyd, but I do know one thing about Roger Waters right now. Boy, he don't like Israel. In case you didn't notice, if you're a Roger Waters Pink Floyd fan and you, you love Israel, boy, you ain't going to like Roger. He's got some bad things to say about the land stealers. The land stealers, they come, they go, hey, my people were here before you. You must go. Go, go, go. Where? Over there, where those people are. Go over there. <laughs> it's it's a clusterfuck, people. And if uh, if you look back far enough, there was a charter from World War One written in 1917, and the, the the opposition claims it's a fake, all right. But this is a long range plan. This whole Israel game, and it's nothing more than a game. I bet you the people that live in it are as clueless of the reality of what they live in as I was in America for my first 25 years. I was dumb as a doornail. I didn't know fucking shit compared to what I know now. Hmm. wonder if it's got something to do with maturing or an aging or if it's actually got something to do with paying attention to the things you see, comparing them to the things you're told, and saying... I'm not the one that's crazy here, because if you go against the illusion, you know, I mean, not the illusion, if <laughs> they call it that. I call it that. But if you go against the government, you know, propaganda that they have found so necessary to put up your ass. Sorry, Pink Floyd, I don't know what to say. It took me to Roger Waters, and I was thinking about politics again. <clears throat> But you can't run for a United States office if you don't openly support the Jews. What do they call it? APAC, I think. you got to swear an allegiance to APAC or they will not finance your campaign at any level of government. So we'll never, ever, 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 ever be free of the Jews. It's like having a monkey on your back, in a, in, like an invisible monkey. You know, so when you swat at it, you look like a weirdo. Hey, what are you doing? You're swatting yourself. No, I got this fucking monkey Israel on my back. And your people look on you and go, what are you talking about? They're the chosen people. They wandered through the desert for 40 years. No, they're special. They deserve to take other people's land away from them. And they even did it in Syria, Golan Heights. How'd they pull that shit off? It's It's Syria. What does Syria have to do with Palestine in the first place? There was a fucking border there a long, long time ago. But, hey, my people know how to make you guys believe just about any fucking thing we want. It, well, just because we want your resources and you don't want to give them to us, that's not a problem. We'll fix you, sir. Bring in the Americans. America, we have a problem. <laughs> And then, then the American press, excuse me, they make some some alien in another faraway land the enemy of the world. You know, nobody ever heard of him ten minutes before this, but all of a sudden he's your sworn enemy by God and country. You need to hate this motherfucker. Shit, I spent four years calling everybody I knew Bin Laden because I thought it was such a crock of shit. Mm. But I was the only one that did. Everybody else was military or afraid of being a weirdo. So they tolerated me, but they did not agree with me. And here we are, all these years later, still tolerated, no agreement. <laughs> he says to me, though, to talk about why I like, I like Pink Floyd, because the music makes me feel good. Hmm. That is something that all music does not do. 
I don't know why. Some things um, hit my sweet spot in my mind, whatever that is with music. And some things turn that god-awful shit the fuck off before I break the damn thing. It's horrible. And that's usually what my friends are listening to. But mm, I'm in a like a, a very close-knit part of uh, rock and roll and blues and maybe a little bit of jazz. I like some of the jazz drummers, but I don't like much of the music that's been made in the last 20 years. Bunch of crap. Bunch of garbage! It's not even worth starting a fire with, for fuck's sake. You're just going to end up burning oil. (laughs) So, I don't know. And we're coming to the end of the Flash Dork Table solo program because Vinny had other things to do. (laughs) So, anyway, thanks a lot, guys. I had a lot of fun jibber-jabbering about who knows what for two hours here on the Real libertymedia.com and uh like to say thank you to Grimner and what I meant before the show was uh Gr- Vinny or Mary always post that I'm doing the show so I don't there's another tricky dicky thing I got to learn how to do and what have we got coming up this is Tuesday so tomorrow get your rocket chair fuel and visit Graham Z Cause she's going to be live. And I'm telling you, man, last Wednesday, if Wednesday was like, this Wednesday was like, well, last Wednesday, <laughs> she was like a nun with a ruler. Slap. And you know, the sad thing is she's right, but she's so isolated in this as you know, the group here is in the real world. We don't, you know, Facebook people at Facebook think we're all insane. But here on RLM, there's only like four or five people that think the the group is insane because the group has no form. It's just a bunch of people that agree about some shit. Oh, hey, sure. Thanks a lot back, Sock Puppet. We agree about some shit. We disagree about other shit. But the Internet makes it so impersonal in a way that you can take it to levels that in, in real life you'd never go to. You just look at the other guy and shake your head and get another beer but on the on the internet world we get a little loose-lipped and we say things out of pocket that can slap the ego bone and make you feel like a complete dope but hey that's life isn't it you know it's, everybody's got to turn in the barrel eventually now maybe we could get somebody else to do something on thursday Oh, hey, thanks, Rob Works. I appreciate that. Uh, maybe Woody could do something. That would be cool. I enjoyed listening to Woody. If Woody does a Thursday, I will support him. Let that be known to the chitter-chatter world. I have spoken. And uh, what else? Then we got coming up on Friday night, though. We got Vinny said he's taking the, uh, his normal ponder gander, and he's going to give it a, a break. Wow, and just do this shit with me. So, being as he didn't do this, he's probably going to do a show on Friday. <laughs> that, hey, thanks, thanks, Rob Works. Hey, people are being nice. Oh, wait a minute, I think I read it twice. My screen jibbled, and uh, and Friday night we've got Grammy Mary on the rocket chair. I uh, forget the damn times and I. Oh, I think it's 1 o'clock my time, so it should be maybe 6 p.m. her time. Well, yeah, I would say that. So it's probably 7 o'clock Eastern, 5, 6. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, And then after Grammy, then you got Grimnir and his trusty partner, Moose Girl, bantering the topics of life on the Freaker's Ball, playing playing music too oh and i put in a request <laughs> for the for the freakers ball for the friday night but i'm sure you're you probably got too many and you won't get to it and even if you played it it but it's the uh it's the two jewish guys playing pink floyd on the street it is priceless and as long as they they do as little vocal as possible it's the vocals that kill it but it's amazing to me that uh music uh t- 
touches people, you know, and it gets them inspired and and it goes beyond all the religious and then political shit and just lets us have a good time and enjoy something. Um, yeah, let's end the show on 9-11 by saying, I'm sure glad we have music um, and that there's still people that play it. the old stuff. The new stuff sucks. Well, that was all I have this week here on the Dork Table. So we're going to set you free and let you go on 9 one, one. Thank you.